area. You're friends of Tainari. I apologize for all the trouble I've caused you. I'm grateful that you came so quickly to save me. Uh, well, actually, we didn't bring the fruit. It was already here when we arrived. We were kind of wondering about that, actually. When we found you here, there was all this fruit lying around and even some juice dripping from your lips. Oh, really? Hmm, I seem to understand now. All the fruit was likely from my, uh, neighbor. Your neighbor? You mean there's someone else living nearby? Oh? So you're able to see them too? Wait, hold on a second, Traveler. You say that before we arrived, you saw some mysterious creature and suddenly had a strange dream? Isn't that a little too crazy to believe? No, I actually do believe what the Traveler is saying. I myself had a similar experience once before and ended up scaring my timid little neighbor here. You needn't worry. They mean you no harm. So, Hypatia, just what kind of creature is your neighbor exactly? I'm not sure what it's called, to be honest. But I do know that they have some sort of deeper connection with the Dendro Archon. I know this because the first time I saw them was also the exact day my consciousness was able to form a connection with Ermin's soul. Even after I opened my eyes and stopped meditating, my heart was still pounding and my mind was racing with all the knowledge that I had touched. And at that very moment, I suddenly noticed a small figure at the opening of the cave. In my curiosity, I began to walk over to the creature. They must have already been used to me living in the cave, 
because they didn't seem to mind me approaching them. It wasn't until I crouched down next to them that they suddenly realized that I could see them. Oh! And then? And then, I had a dream. By the time I came to, they were nowhere to be seen. I was convinced they'd never show up again. But, sure enough, I saw them nearby a few days later. And they weren't alone. I feel like they aren't as afraid of me as the first time I approached them. But I never would have expected them to save me. Yes, no doubt about that. By the way, Tainari mentioned in his letter that you had questions for me regarding Ermansoul. <laughs> Sorry about that. Sounds like just drinking juice still isn't quite enough for my stomach. Well, if somebody hadn't dropped the food earlier... <sighs> anyway, looks like we'll need to prepare something ourselves. Besides, Paimon's getting hungry too. Let's eat first and talk about Ermansoul later. Alright, we're up, Traveler. Today's menu will feature sweet madame and a radish veggie soup. You'll love them, Hepasia. They're our specialties after all. Mmm, sounds good. I've never tried any dishes from other nations before. Motion to compel! Let's use the empty box that Tainari gave us since we already watched it. Oh, it smells amazing. And the box is a nice touch too. Let's go serve this up and start eating with Hapasia. Are you already finished cooking? Mmm, smells delectable. I'm truly thankful whenever I can enjoy a proper meal like this. Even though everything you mentioned was in Tainari's letter, it's still hard to believe you were able to connect with Ermansoul. It took me nearly three years before I could do so. And everyone at the Academia even lauded me as a genius. You should know that some researchers spent their entire lives without ever successfully connecting with Ermansoul as you have. So why does this incense allow people to connect to Ermansoul? The ingredients used to make spirit born ale primarily consist of plants created by Greater Lord Ruka Devata. Since the root of the Dendro Archon's power lies within Ermansoul, we can occasionally tap into her powers to peer into the depths of the Earth. Naturally, anyone who can establish a connection with Ermansoul in their first ever attempt must be a person of great understanding. Hmm, makes sense. But Paimon's got a question. Why was she sensitive to the smell of those plants for such a long time? That was primarily due to her body's unique constitution. Taking in any scent similar to the ingredients of spirit born ale would cause adverse effects. Not to worry though, it appears you've already fully recovered. Technically, your body should still be sensitive to the powers of the Dendro Archon. But unless you're using intentional meditation techniques, the scent of spirit born ale should no longer trigger such reactions. Whew. Well, that's a relief. I must admit, I am quite envious of your abilities. Whoa, you're really serious about this whole thing, aren't you? <laughs> I am a researcher, after all. As a member of the Ritaoist Darshan at the Academia, my main area of research is the stars and their connection to the fate of living beings. Which is why I'm... If only my perception wasn't so limited. 
Unfortunately, I cannot guarantee that my every attempt to attune with Ermansoul will be successful. I am currently in the stage of training known as Satyavada Life. Many researchers in Sumeru have lost their minds while seeking to attune with Ermansoul during this stage. Sages have said that Ermansoul contains divine knowledge, and touching such knowledge without the proper preparations and abilities will only lead to one's mind caving in on itself. That's why we meditate alone. We need to ensure that our minds will be calm, while minimizing the possibility of involving anyone else. Whoa! So knowledge from Ermansoul can be super dangerous! Aren't you afraid of the risk, Hapasia? Of course I do. Especially during nights that are pitch black with no moonlight, and dead silent without even the sound of insects. However, I've been feeling better as of late. I don't get as scared anymore knowing that I have a little neighbor living nearby. I believe that being able to see them is a sort of blessing from the Dendro Archon. <laughs> but what's strangest of all is that they're clearly an envoy of the God of Wisdom herself. And they have the curious power to make people dream. What's so strange about that? It doesn't sound so out of place for a divine being, does it? Well, it's strange because nearly nobody in Sumeru can ever dream. Oh, huh. is that true? Yes, well, to an extent. Only children can dream in Sumeru. Adults, however, never do. The sages say that wisdom implies rationality, but that which occurs in dreams is often neither rational nor logical. Yes, if one struggles with anxieties, those emotions could influence their dreams. The fact that the people of Sumeru do not have dreams is seen as a blessing by the sages, I was born into a family of scholars in Sumeru City. I studied hard, enrolled as a student in the academia, and went on to become a researcher. But then, on the day I scared the little Aranara, I suddenly saw a dream again. It was incredible. Though I don't exactly remember what I saw, I clearly recall the feeling. Back then, I was foolish and ignorant as any youth would be, but I was free of fear. Maybe dreaming isn't as bad as we've made it out to be. <clears throat> uh, just be sure not to speak of this if you travel to Sumeru City. So, do you have any thoughts about the things she saw when she connected with Ermansoul? Sorry, I'm afraid I don't have any answers as of now. All I can say is that what you saw is a memory contained within Ermansoul itself. Hmm, world forget me. What could that possibly mean? Uh, if only I could ascend past Satyavada life and begin Paripurna life. Uh, if you two are ever in the area again, please be sure to come and see me. There's no need to be thanking me. You two are my saviors. Besides, I'm already looking forward to tasting some more of your cooking. <laughs> Hapasia is alright, and had the chance to ask her some questions, Paimon thinks it's about time to head back to Gandharvaville. Think about it, Tainari. Refusing to join is tantamount to burying your head in the sand. I understand that you're a forest watcher and that it's your duty to combat the effects of withering zones. As Sage Kaje clearly stated, your presence and guidance in Sumeru City is pivotal in finding a cure for Ermansul. Keep your emotions in check, Gulam. Sage Kaje, I am truly honored that you came here in person, but I'm afraid I must still decline your invitation. I am merely a forest watcher. <laughs> well, it turns out that your refusal letter had some implications on your master's reputation. I see. Huh. And I figured that given his temper, he would come here and berate me personally. Tainari, your master is an integral part of this effort, and now he requires your assistance. And what exactly does my master need of me, Sage Kaje? 
You'll know, once you've arrived in Sumero City, that is. And how long will I be required to stay? Uh, there's no definite answer as of now. Do you mean to tell me that despite coming all the way here to Kondarbaville, you- If that's the case, then I'm afraid I cannot give you a definite answer either. Tainari, but you- Ah, uh, so be it. Come, Gulam, we're leaving. It's nothing. Some people from the Academia wanted me to go to Sumeru City to assist them with a project. But, but all that can wait. How did things go with Hapasia? It was quite the eventful trip, but the main thing is that she's safe and sound. Very good. Now that the Traveler has made a full recovery, there shouldn't be any reason for you to tarry here longer. That's right! We want to meet Lesser Lord Kusanali and ask her for advice. Sorry. I'm afraid I don't have any advice for you there. Well. Do you at least know anyone we can try asking in Sumeru City? Hmm, let me think. My trips to Sumeru City have been fairly short. How about this? I'll write you a letter of introduction that you can give to a researcher I know. Also, when you enter Sumeru City, you'll probably end up receiving something like this item here. Oh? What is it? It's called an Akasha Terminal. Needless to say, this device and its usage fall under the Academia's expertise. So I'll leave it to them to show you how to use it. Great! Next up, Sumeru City! Uh, oh, but wait, before that... That's right! Tainari, we have something important to say to Kale before we leave! Yes, she's doing much better. She knew you two would be leaving soon, so she must have wanted to see you off. Thanks, Tainari. All right, let's go! Farewell, and good luck to you both. We'll have to grab a great flame maker. <laughs> You two. I, uh. Well, uh. <sighs> Never mind. Thanks for waiting here just to see us off, Kale. We're headed to Sumeru City. Don't worry about me. I can take care of myself. My condition won't be getting in the way of my duties. And, uh. Well, uh. I'm sorry. I should have told you both about my condition when we first met. But I guess now I understand that the most important thing is for friends to be genuine with one another. There's no need to apologize, Kale. We should be thanking you for trusting us enough to be your friends and sharing your past with us. We're probably still gonna worry about your condition, but that's because we're friends and we care about you. Thank you. That means a lot. Uh, before you leave, I have something for you. Oh? What is it? It's my recipe for pita pockets. I told you that I'd give you a copy, remember? My handwriting is a little, uh, messy, so please don't laugh. Yay! Thanks, Kale! Now we can eat those scrumptious little pitas whenever and wherever we like! I hope that whenever you eat them, you'll both remember your time here in Gandarvaville. Well then, I, Trainee Forest Ranger Kale, bid you both farewell. 